Hey, how's it going? Well, this is a video response to Liz's response to my video. Hey guys, it's me, Liz. Today, we are going to be going over my dearest friend Kazoom's video. First, I want to say, you know, thank you for your response. I have been getting annoyed by some of the comments who don't seem to understand why I worded things the way that I did. It seems a number of people were confused at this, even though I, I thought I explained in the beginning of the video. I mean, one of the very first things I mentioned is the book by Colin Flaherty, that the book is called Don't Make the Black Kids Angry. And he shoves forth this premise. So my entire video hinges on the way that that was worded. Um, I don't know how anyone has had missed that. I don't get it. I thought I was pretty clear. That's why I'm wording things the way that I am there. It's to tackle those who make those kinds of arguments. My video was to point out hypocrisy particularly when people will tell others not to do identity politics and then turn around and do identity politics. People who won't really listen to anyone describe things that they've gone through, if they are things that they couldn't experience themselves. So, you know, some sort of situation that a gay man might go through, or a black man might go through, or uh, uh, a lesbian might go through, or just whatever, uh, that is something that a straight white guy is probably not going to experience, not unless, like, I don't know, it would take quite a situation to, to experience that same thing. You know, when someone has gone through something like that, and they're describing their experiences. Some people will refuse to listen to that, but then will turn around and expect people to give, you know, them some sort of pity party because of something that they're going through. You know, well, you know, you, you have to look at this uh, uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm in the majority and, and you have to feel sorry for me because I'm in the majority. It's like the gay man going, you have to accept me. But in this case, they actually have something to back them up. They can say, well, you have to accept me because you don't have another choice. We're in the majority and you're going to, you know, you're going to listen. Because that's just the way that sort of thing goes. Now, my video was absolutely not targeted towards those who give a shit and state they give a shit. It's not geared towards those people. This sort of thing, it, it, it's, it's been happening a lot and I, I don't really know what to do about it. I don't want to treat my audience like they're stupid. I don't think I should have to spell things out. But then again, I, I'm a fan of like the movies where they don't spell things out, where you have to watch something several times to figure out what exactly happened here or the movies that take it that to extreme, you have to figure out what's going on at all. Like the movie Brazil. You have to watch it several times to realize that the whole thing is just a love story. You know? Now, I mean, if you already know what is going on before you watch it, you know, then it, it doesn't take you quite as much by surprise, but... um. You know, I figure that everyone is capable of figuring that kind of stuff out. I don't want to treat people like they're stupid. But apparently, I, I sometimes have to do this. Um, I, I just... I, I really thought that bringing up Colin Flaherty's book and saying the name of the book would have been enough. But apparently it isn't, and I, I guess I, I don't really have a sense of a level of, of what level of explanation I should have to go through for things. Um, I'm trying to hold other people to my standards, and maybe I should stop doing that. 
it saddens me because I didn't really think I had that high of standards as far as, you know, what someone should expect out of their audience. But, you know, in the video, my main point is to try to point out the hypocrisy. You know, the people who do not have any empathy towards any other group, but then expect everyone to have some sort of pity party towards them, including the groups that they don't give a shit about, um, I think it's stupid. I think it's pathetic. And I think it's hypocritical. That's who I was addressing in the video. But because it had the title it did, the name of Colin Flaherty's book doesn't make any difference. The concepts he's pushing forth aren't don't make any difference. My describing certain types of people who have certain kinds of behavior, that's not that's not good enough either. I guess I have to go, well, I'm I'm not talking about you, and I'm not talking about you. And I'm referring to this book. Let me let me say it again. I'm referring to this book. Hey everyone, I'm referring to this book. I'm trying to make a rebuttal to this book, to to the concepts in this book, to the concepts that people who argue like this person argue. This is who I'm talking about. This is why I'm talking about it. Hey everyone. Hey 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 everyone. You know I I I I I, I don't know how far I'm supposed to go on this. I mean, at what point do I cut off? How specific, the specific people I'm talking about. Do I constantly need to say, no, I don't mean you. No, no, I don't mean you. I don't mean this person. 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 Should I list like, like you know, hundreds of people? If you're not someone that does these things I say in my videos, then the video is not addressed to you. You are seeing me address people who think like that. And if you're going to get all defensive about this, because I'm talking about a specific type of people, people who use certain kinds of uh, rationality, you know, that's not something that is directed to you. And, 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 I, and I've had to explain this sort of thing a number of times, and it's this sort of shit that just makes me want to give up on even doing any of the commentary where it's, it's, it's supposed to be helpful to anybody. And I, I hate having to spell things out because it makes me feel like I'm talking down to the audience. It makes me feel like I'm talking down to people. Hi, I know more than you. Let me let me really explain all this stuff because you're too stupid to understand any of it anyway. I don't like treating people that way. No. So now I will try to address Liz's points in this video. I watched about four minutes in and then I downloaded the file and, you know, so the first four minutes I've already seen, the rest of it I haven't. And there may be points where I will uh, forward because it might be just continuing on a certain type of argument that may or may not be a straw man or, you know, because of possibly not understanding the context of why I made the video the way that I did. So we shall see. Like I said, I've only watched four minutes of her video um, and... Uh, and, and I appreciate the responses, I do. It, it helps me, it helps me try, it helps me communicate better. It helps me understand uh, uh, your, people's concerns. Um, it helps me show where I'm wrong. So, you know, I appreciate it. But sometimes it's frustrating, especially when people who I thought would have known that I'm not the type of person to actually say, oh, you know, all oh, those whiteies. I'm not that I'm not that kind of person. That's not that's not where I'm coming from on this. <laughs> so anyway, here's here is uh, here is Liz's response and my response to her response. You're my friend, you know that. You're normally really good about taking criticism and you normally can agree to disagree on a lot of things. So this is one floating head to another. Liz against the kids. Are you ready to rumble? Fight!
not 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 really fight cuz no you're my friend but hey let's do this there's a book and a number of videos out there by someone named Colin Flaherty it's called don't make the black kids angry and since lately I've been going after the alt-right a little bit, yeah, I can admit after looking through that book a little bit, it can be pretty alt-rightish with the them after our whiteness conspiracy theories. But you do have to take into account a lot of black crime out there is being turned into this guy committed a crime and is now a martyr. A lot of it. And you cannot deny that. Oh, I certainly won't deny that. And it can happen in any group, especially ones that are feeling disenfranchised in some way, or in many ways, especially groups that have lost hope. Now, this isn't a guarantee that if people have lost hope that they're going to do that, but it's that sort of losing hope that makes terrorists. I mean, look across the globe. Look at what drives people to become terrorists. That is probably the only thing to really take away from that book that I can see of any use, really. And to put your head in the sand about it is kind of ignorant. Now to say that there isn't complete asshole cops out there and that there is violence against black people that is completely unwarranted is not a thing. It, that is also ignorant as well. Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who believe that shit. Their numbers are larger than you probably want to believe. And even back in the 70s, people would say, well, you know, you're, it's legal to be gay now, so shut up about your rights. Shut up about the way that society treats you. Shut up. And I have even seen this as well. As soon as somebody is trying to make sure that their rights do not get violated any further or make sure that a right is now a social norm, people do tend to be assholes, especially in YouTube comments. But the real world isn't necessarily YouTube comments. Not right now, but this kind of stuff is starting to make its way into real life. The internet does eventually spill over into real life. The internet affects people a lot more than uh, television ever did. And when you look at how so many people's conversations, even today, will still revolve around what you find on television, then if you think that the stuff where people are actually trying to talk about, uh, you know, political subjects, uh, sometimes, uh, what's the right, what is that word? Uh, esoteric, I almost said isoteric, <laughs> esoteric subjects, you know, this sort of thing is going to affect people a lot more than television ever did. And to claim that that isn't going to have a major effect on people and culture and all this stuff, the internet is still pretty young. How much it affects us and the type of culture that you find on the internet will spill its way into real life. I've heard plenty of conversations where people are talking about things that you would expect to only be on the internet. So this is why a lot of this stuff is very worrying for a lot of people in the LGBT community. It's, it's very worrying because a lot of this stuff that, I mean, even, take even the whole uh, anti-racism is a, a code word for anti-white, that whole crap, that, that uh, Bob Whitaker's mantra. Okay, just a few years ago, that was laughed at. It was like, that's ridiculous. And now people are taking this shit seriously. You know, and, and as you've said, you know, the alt-right, uh, a lot of aspects of the alt-right are just like, holy shit, this, this is crazy. And this stuff is very worrisome for the LGBT community. It's very worrisome for a lot of minorities. But yes, this stuff is spilling into real life. That's what has so many people worried. It isn't an issue of if it spills into real life, it's an issue of when and how badly will it spill into real life. When people are already having expletives thrown at them just for being gay or just for being black or just for, you know, whatever uh, demographic they're in that isn't in the majority, um, when that sort of stuff is already happening, and yes, I understand there have been some fake reports of this stuff, but um, out of thousands of reports. I mean, I know it's above a thousand now um, since Trump got elected. Uh, uh, 
you can't claim that all of those are all they're all fake a thousand reports they're all fake it's just all a, a big show i don't think so no no so you know it, we're concerned we're very concerned we know what it's like to be treated a, a particularly shitty way we know the mindsets that are behind being treated that way we we're all well too familiar with this stuff and when we see this sort of thing coming up and could potentially be affecting us in real life we are going to be concerned this is serious stuff but then there are these people out there that when we try to talk about it you're like oh stop complaining and then those same people turn around and talk about how terrible things are because white people are being chastised you know, I'm not saying any of the uh, uh, the chastising is is right. I'm not saying any of it is the way that we should approach things. But I do feel very, very, very strongly that people should be able to talk about the things that they go through, the things that their group ha is going through, the things that you know their friends who are part of that whatever group that is are going through. This should be able to be talked about. This should be able to be discussed. These problems should be able to be discussed. But you can't expect people to just, I'm not, I'm not saying you, Liz, I'm just, I'm saying just anyone that is of this kind of mindset where you want people to, you know, give you a pity party for things you're going through, but you don't have any empathy towards other groups because you think their complaints aren't valid. Okay, I've seen a number of comments on my videos talking about very valid things that they're concerned about uh, being a, a, a white, a straight, cisgender male. I, I understand. It's particularly at, uh, you know, the worries of uh, affirmative action and how it affects, uh, you know, colleges, how it affects uh, workplaces and... Uh, you know, discrimination is discrimination. Uh, and when that discrimination is based on race, I, I, I don't think it, it, it matters whether or not it's for, against whatever race. Um, I think the number one thing should be, you know, who is the best person for the job? And we should be trying to make sure that people aren't passing up someone who was actually more qualified for the job but but because they were this race they didn't get it yeah that's fucked up and that needs to be addressed but i do believe in in to some degree in a, a meritocracy not fully again i mean i i think there if there are three people who have equal let's say there are three people who have equal qualifications for a job and it's it's at that point where you know the race uh, uh, and quotas might come into place but that's the only time it's when you know there's several people qualified for the job equally qualified nothing stands out about one person any more than another you know those those are the times i mean because what are they going to do well, are they going to roll the dice oh well well eeny meeny miny mo i mean what do you you know so it's at that point where i think you know basing it off of someone being considered a, a more oppressed group should you know is appropriate to consider for <laughs> i'm wording this terribly but if you go outside of the youtube comment world you will see how people really are changing and they've been changing for the better we were changing for the better but that started to change in these past two years and especially after trump got elected the the landscape the political and social landscape has begun to change and pretty radically at an alarming rate you know if the trump presidency didn't make people who have been more underground with their mindsets feel more vindicated i, I wouldn't really care that much about a trump presidency you know not nearly as much as i do there's obviously the strange people he's putting on his cabinet as far as the EPA. And there's the Board of Education to worry about. Though I do know that our, 
our education system for K through 12 is totally fucked. Totally fucked. When we live in a time where instead of uh, f the teacher finding a different way to teach a student or us giving the teacher the ability to teach a student a different way, we're like, well, let's just pump them full of drugs. Here, have some Ritalin because you think a little differently. You know, I, I, I think that's bullshit. That, that's, a, that's a travesty. Because a lot of this isn't about teaching kids how to think. A lot of it has been, let's teach kids what to think. And I, I think that's messed up. These changes that are going on, that have been happening the past couple of years, are not good changes. These are not positive changes. We are headed backwards in time. And the Republicans' favorite periods are, you know, the 80s, the 1980s, and before that, the 1950s. They don't like the 60s and the 70s much. It is when you try to force feed certain identities down people's throats do a lot of conservatives and, well, a lot of just general people recoil because you must accept this. But in all actuality, we have been doing a lot better as a human race, in my opinion. Are humans doing better? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. When I watched that video, it, it just popped into my head. I said, I need to see, I need to hear this song again. And I started crying. I started crying because it's like, you know, this is the stuff that we used to have to deal with. This is some of the stuff that we've somewhat overcome. And it is sad to see some people still struggling with that. Sad to see entire generations struggling to get through that. But when people do accept that certain laws and certain privileges and certain rights need to be enacted or are enacted and they're still protesting. What people are protesting when there's nothing wrong? And sometimes getting violent, you're shoving it down people's throats. You're like, okay, got it. Stop telling us that we're bad people. We've, you've, you've got what you wanted. And After the slaves were freed, should they have just completely shut up? Should black people have just shut up? Because look, you, you, you got what you wanted. People are trying to reciprocate, standing with you, going, yay, you've got what you deserved. Yay, we can move on. A lot of people are not allowing us to move on. When so many attitudes haven't changed, and in some cases, attitudes are getting worse, and we're seeing that the attitudes are getting worse, no, we're not going to just move on. And you wouldn't move on either. And people aren't moving on when it comes to white people being treated like shit. They have to hold on to the past. They have to hold on to the oppression that happened in the past. There are some people who do that, indeed. But a lot of this stuff is in the present. And a lot of this stuff is a fear of what we're seeing patterns of in society. No, we're not going to shut up about it. It is time to look at the future and look forward. The more you hang on to that shit, the more you're just going to get angry. You have to let people adjust. Yes, I agree that we have to let people adjust. Yes. But that's different than what you just said just moments previous to that. Yes, of course we have to let let people adjust. You can't, you know, violate the Overton window. It can only be stretched so far. You know, people's uh, uh, open-mindedness is only going to rise at a certain rate, no matter what gets done, no matter what people talk about. And, uh, you know, you can't force that. So, yes, I agree with you there, and I've talked about it many times. And, as I've said before, real world is not YouTube comment sections. It really is not. You need to look at how people are honestly being treated. The comment sections? No, not necessarily, though there are some comments that might, you know, be a representation of what you see in real life. But when it comes to videos, when it comes to video makers, when it comes to mindsets that are spreading, when it comes to people's attitudes about a number of social subjects, um, yeah, this, this does spill over into real life, absolutely. And what pisses me off, I mean, it really, really pisses me off, is when people will say, well, you need to stop it with this identity politics because white people are being persecuted. 
and they don't realize the irony and the hypocrisy in their statements like that. Poor, poor white people. People are saying negative things about white people. But screw everyone else for talking about identity politics. And this is where you really lose me, kids. Because hashtag not all of the people that are saying you've got to stop talking about this identity politics, you're conflating too many general broad terms and too many general groups and you're lumping them all together. I'm not lumping all these things together. I'm complaining about the people who do all of these things, who do the combination of all these things. Most of the people that I know personally that are upset about being vilified that are white are doing their damnedest not to be racist or sexist or misogynistic to the point where the suicide rates are going up and everything people are sheltering themselves in they dare not say or do anything because they're the white devil now okay just as it is demanded that people prove that uh, gay people are being persecuted and ridiculed, uh, verbally abused in real life, just like there has to be all this proof of that or proof that gay people are being physically bashed in order to claim that uh, gay people are have been treated worse since Trump got elected, um, I'm going to need some proof that there have been some actual conversations and debates Besides, in comment sections with trolls, uh, trolls that you say you shouldn't, you know, judge uh, what's going on in real life, you know, uh, actual conversations that people who are trying to be reasonable, who are trying very hard not to be racist, trying very hard not to be homophobic, um, trying very hard not to be sexist, are being told that they are those things simply for saying that they don't agree with identity politics. Now, if at any point during a debate about identity politics, someone says things that white people go through, then they've kind of lost their ability to complain about identity politics. Now, I know you're saying that the people that you know have tried very hard on this, but again, if they've ever stated, well, look at the way white people are being treated, as soon as anyone makes that statement, you lose the ability to criticize others for talking about identity politics. Okay, that's some of what I'm trying to say in my video. You know, I don't really have a problem with identity politics. I think everyone should be able to talk about the things that are affecting them and are affecting their group. And what you're about to say right here, it starts to get really oppression Olympic-y. The reason why I mentioned the book at the beginning is because what the real thing is, is don't make white people angry. That's the real key issue here. Because if you make white people angry, you get people like Trump in office. And partially you're right, and partially you're very wrong. The voting numbers alone show that not enough people voted for you to be able to make that as a clear statement. There needed to be a lot more people going out and voting to be able to say that all white people did this because... Never in my video did I say all white people. Ever we're feeling vilified. Personally, most of the people that I know that voted for Trump did not do it because they were being vilified. They did it because they didn't want a war with Russia or they really hated Hillary's politics. That may be true. And what's also true is that many people who voted for Trump because they didn't like Hillary weren't really thinking that much about the actual ramifications of Trump. That's what I am hearing from my end of the spectrum. It is not, white people done did it. Trump did it. Oh my God, we've got Trump. White people are bastards. You're actually taking the root of the oppressor when you do this. That's if that's what I was doing. Again, uh, I am putting this in contrast to what the name of that book was. I'm saying, well, you know, if there is anyone that we're supposed to uh, not make angry, it should be the majority of the populace. 
You know, we better not make those who have the most power angry. I don't think that's, I, I mean, to me, that just goes without saying. You, it's just not a smart thing to do. Um, you know? When you say that white people are the cause of all of your problems. Well, luckily I never stated that. There really is no difference than back in the day when people were saying the gays are gonna take away our families. The gays are going to corrupt our youth. You are doing the same exact thing and it hurts. You know what hurts? Being told for decades that I shouldn't complain about anything that I'm going through as a gay man. You know what hurts? Over the past two years, anyone, any gay person trying to talk about things that they go through as a gay person and things that they struggle with as a gay person is something that we shouldn't talk about because, well, that's just identity politics and you're just a an SJW pussy. And that's getting worse and worse and worse. And then some of the same people who are telling gay people this sort of thing, which you're not one of these people telling gay people this, and those that are saying this about gay people, oh, they just, you know, it's just identity politics and they should shut up. Oh, they should just move on. Are some of the same people, some, 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 not all, some, are the same ones that will follow up those statements by talking about terrible things that, that straight people go through. For me to see you do that. I'm not gonna go through every single part of this video either. I'm gonna hit a couple more high notes on this because I'm gonna do a little bit of a ramble and, and we're, we're gonna get this done or it's gonna be 20 minutes long and nope. That's what happens. Make fun of, of feminine men all you want Make fun of women all you want, but don't you dare make fun of straight, white, cisgender males, especially if they're masculine. You know, kids, don't make fun of anybody. Don't make fun of anybody at all. How come so many of these people that are saying you're on our side, well, no, words don't matter. Words don't make any difference. But if words are said against straight people, oh, no, it's a tragedy. But they're said against gay people. Oh, that's okay. They're just words. They're just words. Is what a lot of the white people are saying. If you would open up your ears. Yes, there's the alt-right out there, which I've been trying to deal with. There needs to be a lot more people speaking against what some of the alt-right is pushing forth. But just look at how Cult of Dusty was treated for trying to call this stuff out. Well, he didn't, he didn't categorize things perfectly correctly. Oh, no. See, this is what people are dealing with. This is the shit that people are dealing with. People can't even talk about this stuff. People can't criticize them at all. The only way that someone will be criticizing them is if it's the one of those, what is his name? Herbert Spencer or whatever his name is. Uh, the guy saying, hail Trump. You know, people have to go to that level to be criticized. I think that's very concerning. So yeah, when, when people are, are going to be talking about this stuff, it's going to be a lot more emotionally charged because this shit doesn't seem to be talked about. Like nobody cares about it. It makes people feel like nobody cares about actual racism. Nobody cares about actual homophobia. Nobody cares about actual sexism. Nobody cares about, about people being treated like shit for, for being a, a minority. And people will say, oh, you know, women aren't a minority. You're right, you're right, women aren't a minority. Let's go into to semantical arguments, right? You know, this is what people are met with anytime anyone tries to talk about any of this shit. You can't even say the phrase alt-right without people ha shitting their pants. Well, that's, that's not really the, the right term, and that's not, this, that's not the right word. You didn't use the right words. You didn't use the right words. You didn't use the right words. And that's what we get met with. Look at most of the people making the videos against Cult of Dusty for trying to call out the alt-right. Look at most of the videos talking about that. Most of it has to do with him. You didn't use the right words. You didn't use the right words. Look how many responses there were to that. People trying to completely invalidate what he said.
So yeah, a, a lot of people on YouTube, if you're really if you if if you really stand for what you say you stand for, then how about criticizing some of the some of the shit? How about it? Oh no, you might look like Steve Shives if you try to talk about it. Right now, it is popular to speak against SJWs, and it is not popular. It is not popular to speak against the alt-right. Speaking against the alt-right will get you labeled an SJW cuck. That's how this environment is right now. And this isn't just by commenters. This is by other YouTubers. You'll get the Riot Act read to you, and then you'll have people coming onto your channel to bully you in some way in the comment sections. And yes, that's just the comment sections. Yes, I understand. But that, that, that disallows people to have any sort of reasonable discussion. When their comment section is filled with shit, there is no discussion to be had. Still got that debate coming up sooner or later. Ugh. But listen, most of the people out there that are saying, oh my god, my whiteness, are going, oh my god, I am not a monster. Stop saying I'm a white nationalist. Then gay people and women and black people need to stop being called SJW cucks just because they're talking about things that they go through as the demographic that they are. Stop saying that I am inherently racist. Well, I'm certainly not saying that, and I know that there's people that do, and I'm hoping that you're referring that to those that do and not me. Because I don't look at people that way. I'm not saying people are inherently racist just for being a demographic. Stop saying that I'm against you because I have a different opinion on one subject. Hashtag not all. Not all, not all, not all. You are lumping everybody together again. Stop it. I never said all. I never said all. I never said all. This is not something I have been doing. I am complaining about a specific set of people. And yes, the majority of people that do this are straight, white, cisgender males. Yes. But that is not all of them. If you look at documents and newspapers and hear people's accounts of, let's say, prior to 1920, you'll hear the same exact things being said about black people as what is said now. Well, they're not slaves anymore, so, you know, what's their problem? What are they complaining about? Negative attitudes? Well, that doesn't matter. Look, they, they have rights now, so they need to shut up. And yet, someone making a negative statement about straight, white, cisgender males is met with, look at this reverse racism, it's terrible. Now you're getting very oppression Olympic-y. No, it is not right for people to go and state things like they did in the 1920s. Great, so I assume you're going to make videos against people like, you know, live life and atheism is unstoppable and uh, Black Pigeon Speaks and Autopsy 87 and a whole shit ton of others. So are you going to start making videos against them? Or are the only videos that are going to be made pretty much against the SJW types and not the opposite problem? You know, this is the problem that I'm having. This is why I'm even talking about this shit. People don't seem to have any concern over the shit that's going on on the other side. Well, you know, the SJWs are the real problem and no one else is anymore as they are today. But there is so much pushback every time somebody wants to try to help black communities. <coughs> I'm gonna say this, hashtag not all, but a lot of them are standing out there going, reparations! That is a small minority of people shoving that forth. Instead of, help the community get better. And on the other side, yes, if you say something bad about white cis males, saying that they are the reason for all of our problems, fuck white people, the way that they are, make you just as bad. The seminars alone that are being presented in colleges that white people are a plague on the planet and nobody's allowed to stand up to them, yes, it is bad. 
When that is the message that's being shoved forth, then yeah, I can't disagree with you here. That is the kind of oppression that is happening directly back to white people. It is flip-flopping. One is no better than the other. You won't get disagreements from me there. But we also need to look at what has caused this sort of narrative to come into place. Are we even thinking about that? That's what I think should be talked about. Why is this a narrative at all? They both have to stop. You cannot sit there and whine and cry through an entire video with going, but my white people, but my white people, boo hoo, poor little white people. I was making that statement towards the people who say that gay people and black people and women shouldn't talk about this stuff because that's identity politics. And then people turn around and then say, oh, poor me, I'm a white person and I deal with this. Well, that's identity politics as well. Complaining about what you go through as a white person is identity politics. We had it so much worse. Do you want it to get as bad as it happened to you? Do you want it to get as bad as what happened prior to the 1920s? Because it is actually getting that bad. Yes, and a lot of this is because there are a number of people out there who aren't willing to even look at or recognize in any way some of the things that minorities still go through. Don't want any acknowledgement of that. But everyone is supposed to fully acknowledge the stuff that white people go through. You know, that is hypocrisy. Okay, I think we should acknowledge the things that white people go through. But we should also acknowledge the things that minorities go through. Okay, it is identity politics. But I don't necessarily put all this negative connotation onto identity politics. I know somebody that is in Canada right now that is fighting for his rights to not take this course that is vilifying him so bad and he has to take it in order to become a teacher. I'm not going to release his name, but with the laws that are going on up there, he feels so isolated and alone and anytime people try to speak up against this rhetoric that he is the devil due to the color of his skin. And if you think that I'm sugarcoating the words, I'm not. Uh, look at this. Look at these pictures from these seminars. Do you not see that this is being allowed and that this is being propagated? Change the words here with LGBT or women. Those images are terrible and I think that is well worth talking about. But people shouldn't do that while at simultaneously dismissing the things that the LGBT go through, that women go through, that black people go through, you know, acknowledge the shit that everyone goes through, that all the different demographics goes through. Or blacks. How well would that go over? That is the problem, kids. It is the oppression Olympics all over. Is it A lot of people out there are shoving forth that something is the oppression Olympics when people simply talk about things that they're going through as a minority. Is that cannot stand up for the rights of one and then shit on the rights of the other because they didn't have it as hard as us. There are a lot of shitty people out there and there are people that are indeed shoving forth what they're shoving forth. But I hope that you think about why some people are angry enough to be able to state these things about white people. I hope you think about that a little bit. Seriously, look at how some people are treated just because they want to talk about the things that they are going through as the demographic that they are. Just look at it. Just look at how people get treated. Look how black people get treated when they talk about how they're treated by police. Just look at it. And I know that earlier in this video you acknowledged some of that, but look at all the people that don't acknowledge this stuff. They don't want to acknowledge any of this stuff, and then they still want to complain about the way that white people are treated. Okay, it's hypocritical. My video is about hypocrisy.
Well, it's gonna get that hard, and it is getting that hard. It is getting extremely unfair. For instance, due to the color of my skin, me being in a poverty level, I can go to the food stamp office or the WIC line or whatever for my kids, and I don't get cash assistance, but somebody at the same exact poverty level as me, with the same exact standing, with black skin, gets two to three hundred dollars a month per kid. I get food stamps, and I get share of cost Medicaid, which sucks. They Sources, please. I, I, I haven't seen that before. I think that's a rumor. I think that's an exaggeration. But sources, please, for that. Thanks. They get full Medicaid for their children until they're 18. I know this for a fact. You know what? If you want equality, stop giving things more to one culture than the other based upon skin. Stop saying that one group of people is more vilified than the other due to color of the skin. If a white person comes up to you and says, I am being oppressed because of this and I don't know what to do, listen to them. Don't shut them down. Then the same needs to be applied to what minorities are going through. But a lot of people are poo-pooing anything that minorities say. This is what is driving people to be so negative towards white people, towards straight white cisgender males. This is one of the big things that's driving it. It's not acceptable, okay? It's not acceptable. But I do at least acknowledge one of the things that's driving it. They're not saying at the same time that all the other people's problems don't exist. They are saying that they have a problem. One person's problems are not more important than the others. There's varying degrees of urgency, but you have to stop picking favorites. And that's what you're doing. You are picking favorites based upon your past lived experiences in such a way that you're no better than you're a white cis male meme. All right? By acting like this, you're doing the exact thing that those who did vote based upon being vilified in the media did. You're, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it right now. You're doing that thing. Stop it. I think I've gotten the point across here enough. I love you, kids. I'm just mainly trying to point out hypocrisy.